Welcome to FaceTime Fly Fishing. I am your host, Eric Straub. Glad you could be a part of the show today. It is March 20th, and uh, as if we didn't have enough snow this year, we're getting hammered once again here in central PA. We've got about seven inches on the ground, and it is still snowing. Uh, <laughs> this has to be the last one. Uh, the good thing is it's not real cold outside, so uh, hopefully we'll we'll get this and get it over with quickly and, and be done with this once and for all. If you're at work, try to look busy today. We've got lots to discuss. I've got a really interesting show for you, and be a part of the show. If you have a question or if you have a comment uh, that can add to the show, by all means, use the Google Plus question answer toggle. Uh, the other way you can get a hold of me is send me a text, 814-505-4568. So uh, check it out. I've had some issues <clears throat> with my Facebook in invitations. Uh, for some reason, my Facebook page won't allow me to send so many invitations, as many as I normally send out. So I've been having some trouble with that. If anybody can help me with that, please get in touch with me. <laughs> you can send me an email at epstraup at gmail.com. That's E-P-S-T-R-O-U-P at gmail.com. Use that for all sorts of things. We've get, we get uh, tons of comments through the week on our past shows. So um, these are all archived on my website at stroutflyfishing.com. So go check them out. You can watch every show that we've done uh, for the past year and a half and uh, lots of interesting topics. Next week, we have a terrific show. I've got a special guest coming on, um, Justin Pittman from Holly Flies down in South Central PA. Um, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a, a good show. But um, at any rate, get in touch with me if you can uh, help me out with this little problem I'm having. Uh, so hopefully... We had lots of people that responded and said they were going to watch the show today, so hopefully we'll have a decent live audience. Uh, the vast majority of people watch this show through the week. So um, at any rate, if you have a question or a comment on anything we discuss on the show, by all means, get in touch with me and share it. A um, couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll just inform you of what's happening at Ground Zero here in the Straub House. Tracy has gone to Indianapolis for a week. I am on my own with the two crazy kids, two crazy boys. And uh, if I survive the week, it's going to be a, a positive. But I got to tell you, it's it's a little bit crazy here right now. <laughs> I had uh, I was going back and forth with one of our our listeners, Josh Miller, and Josh, if you're out there tying flies right now, which is what he likes to do while the show is on. Uh, peace, brother. <laughs> but uh, I was going back and forth with him a little bit on uh, Facebook messaging prior to the show starting, and I, I told him I, I just can't get anything done. It's absolutely <laughs> insane. Uh, a 14-month-old and a 5-year-old. So it's crazy. That's what's happening here at the Straub House. Um, Lots of events coming up. We've got the Sulphur School. If you're interested in this, Tom Baltz and I are doing this together. We used to do this years ago. Uh, for those, some of you that might be familiar and remember that, um, we did this. It's a great school. It's a three-day school where we tie the flies. We discuss the hatch. We discuss everything that occurs during the hatch, and then we fish it. And uh, it's it's terrific. Uh, in years past, I used to have Greg Hoover come down and give a little program. Uh, Hump might come over and, and tie some flies. So uh, it's going to be terrific. It's $600. It is May 18th through the 20th. It's at our lodge, and um, it's terrific. That includes everything. That's your meals, guiding, all the instruction. Uh, for the fly tying, that includes all the materials. And let me make a, a special note, too. Um, we did a, a FaceTime episode a few weeks ago on the sulfur nymphs. Um, my dubbing, my blends are being blended right now by Jack Mikovic. Um, this stuff is dynamite. We've got lots of requests for it. I'm back ordered on it. Uh, it's being done right now. Hopefully, I'll have it this coming week. And if you want packs of this dubbing, this is the light sulfur nymph, the dark sulfur nymph, and the thoraxes for both of them. Uh, and the beadhead versions, 
anything that you want, get in touch with me and let me know, and I'll be packaging them up and sending them out. So uh, I'll have that on the site uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks for sure, for those of you who are interested. Um, the Lodge, Gorge View Lodge, our lodge, is uh, 65 bucks a night. If you're coming to Central PA and you need a place to stay and you want it to be around the good fishing, uh, give me a call. $65 a night, you can't beat it. We're going to talk today about being efficient on the stream. I, uh, In Tracy's absence this week, she didn't know that she was going to have to go to Indianapolis. This is for her doctorate. Uh, didn't know she was going to have to do it this year. She was hoping to do it next year, but it turns out she's on a deadline now and she had to go. So she was scheduled to speak to the Central Pennsylvania Women Anglers Association. These gals can fish. They are terrific. And since she can't do it, I'm filling in for her. And one of the things we're going to discuss this weekend when I go over and talk to these gals is efficiency on the stream. And I thought, this would be a good show uh, for us today. So I want to go over some things. Uh, any of you that are guides, we have lots of guides that, that listen to the program. If you want to chime in uh, with some tips or things of that nature, uh, by all means, please do. But I really want to talk about um, spending your time on the water fishing and not tying flies or, or retying your rig. I see it all the time. I watch guys, and they'll be fishing a leader that's six feet long, and it's uh, it looks like 2X that they're fitting through the fly. And I'll say, why are you fishing this? And they'll say, well, it would just take too long for me to adjust all of this and fix it. And that is, that is a horrible excuse for a fisherman, <laughs> to put it lightly. Um, you want to be able to be efficient on the water. And there's lots of little things that you can do. If you know someone who guides, they'll be able to tell you because the, the real value of a guide, and I've talked about it on here before, uh, is not necessarily that you're getting all this expert knowledge. It's that you spend more time with your flies in the water. Now, hopefully you're getting some expert knowledge, but it's really the fact that you're going to be fishing more. If you get a guide, who goes out with you, I can guarantee you that the majority of your day is going to be spent with flies in the water. And that ups your chances right off the bat without any knowledge of what's going on in the river. That increases your odds um, tenfold. So keeping your flies in the water is really the name of the game. Um, guys that are, that are guides are constantly fiddling with leaders, changing flies, adding weight, taking weight off. They're always doing things like that. And so it's quick. They do it quickly. And uh, with the exception of, you know, having to retie uh, a large section of, of leader, um, you are not going to be standing around waiting most of the day. Uh, you should be having your, <clears throat> your flies in the water. So behind me, I've got my vest here. And, uh, we're going to get into that a little bit. I, I really want to talk about the vest to begin with. Um, first thing is don't carry too much stuff with you. I see guys, they look like they're going to Afghanistan, um, you know, and like there, there's no coming back. They've got to pack everything with them. We all know those guys, and, and some, of it, some of you might be listening. <laughs> don't take all of that stuff. You don't need all of that really pare it down. Um, you don't want to be having to move three items to get to an item. Uh, number one, you're going to drop it. You're going to drop something in the water. Uh, and it takes time. You don't want to take time. Time is our number one enemy on the water. I want to spend all of my time fishing and none of my time uh, fiddling with my gear. So um, pare down your vest. Only take what is absolutely essential in your vest. I use a particular vest. I'll bring this over. <clears throat> I use a, uh, I don't know what it's called, a strap vest or something. But this really does not have much in the way of pockets. I really cannot fit a ton of stuff in here. And that's really what I wanted. 
I don't want more than one or two boxes in a pocket. I don't want to have to move something to get at something else. Um, this vest, as many of you know, I wear a chest box with, that carries most of my flies. So I don't need to carry a lot of flies in here. Uh, I will carry some, some boxes of specialty things. <clears throat> and these are things that I just, um, I want them separated. Like, for example, I've got a box of soft tackles that I use for very specific purposes. They don't need to be floating around through my chest box where I need to look for them. This is something that I'm going to use um, for a very specific purpose. I always like to have them with me because I can fish them any time of year. And they, they have a pocket. They have their own pocket in my vest, and I know that I've got my soft tackles with me. The next pocket that I've got here is stuff that I, that I tie. These little boxes are absolutely terrific. This is all stuff. This is real small stuff here that I that I carry with me. And the reason I like to have them have this stuff in these little boxes is number one, if I drop this box, nothing's going to come out of it. That's really important. How many of you have dropped a box, one of the older boxes that have all loose flies in them? You drop them in the river and half of your inventory is gone. So I don't like that. Uh, small stuff that you have trouble getting your fat fingers in and getting them. I really like to keep them separate. So this is stuff that this little box comes out every night when I get back, goes right onto my fly tying desk. And anything that I tie that's small just goes in here. And then I just take it and stick it in my box. I have another one, which I think might be on my fly tying box, but I keep two of them in here. And, uh, I know that, you know, any fresh stuff that I tied, that's where it is. I might have tied it specifically for tomorrow's trip. So that makes that easy. Up here, I may have uh, something very specific. Uh, if I tied something, but that's all that's in there. I don't need to carry, I don't need to fill every pocket in the vest. It's just not necessary. I think what's more important about your vest is that it's functional. And by that, I mean, you want things that you're going to use a lot to be right at your hands. So when you, you don't want to have to use two hands to do anything with your vest. That's really what's important here. That's when I say you don't want to have to move something to get to something else that requires two hands. Um, I see lots of guys that if they have to re-rig something, they walk out of the river and you don't want to do that. You, you don't want to give up your spot, number one. And by walking out, you're disturbing things. You're taking up time. You want to stay right where you are if you have a problem and, and fix it. So I try to set things up so that I only need one hand for anything that I'm doing. Um, nippers. Now, I've got my nippers on my jacket out there, but they're right here. So when I'm ready to cut something, all I have to do is this. And it's a piece of cake. Same with floating. Um, I want that right here. I don't want to have to look for it. I don't want to have to go into a vest. Now, this is my liquid floating. Um, my dry shake, I, I actually put in a pocket. But it has its own pocket. <laughs> but anyway, you want everything to be efficient, easy to get at. Um, forceps. I keep my forceps on this side. So I've got nippers here, forceps here, and they, they stretch out. So it um, just makes everything easy. A light. I like to carry a light right here on my vest. So very, very simple. The other thing I wanted to talk about was water. I see a lot of these new vests now that have the uh, camel back. I think that would be a, a total pain in the ass. I'm sorry. I'm, I guess it's nice to, to have a tube here where you can just suck out of the tube. But you know, the fact that you have to fill this thing before you leave, um, it just doesn't make sense to me. I would rather have a water bottle that I can tuck away right here. When I go back to the truck at lunch, if I want to put a fresh one in there, I can do that. Um, but, you know, that's to each their own. 
I have a question here. Other than a chess box, do you have a recommendation for a box for dry flies that will not flatten the hackle? Uh, Dan, I no, I don't. Not that will not flatten the hackle. Now, I will say that this box that I have for my soft hackles, I'll show you this. Let me set that down there. Um, if you look at this, this is called bug luggage. I don't even know if they still make it. But if you can see, that's got a raised um, area to put your fly into. That might work really well. These used to be pretty hot. When I had my fly shop, I used to sell this stuff. It was kind of pricey, but it's good stuff. So if, you, if anybody out there knows, do they still make bug luggage? Um, I'm sure you could find something like that out there. Now, my chest box... Um, tip it. This is one area when I put my chest box on I keep my tippet on right here. So what that means is if I need a strand of 4X I can pull it right off of here and cut it with my nippers. Um, this is really handy for me. Plus, you know, if you depending on the, the brand that you use, you can see exactly because they're labeled. So um, the stuff that I go through the most, 3X, 4X, 5X, um, I keep it all right here, extra, extra spools of each. Uh, as a guide, as you can imagine, I go through, I'll go through uh, a half a dozen spools of 4X in a week. So... Um, Really, really handy to keep it right here. Now, I've seen all sorts of uh, little gadgets. I've seen things where guys have a little cutter on their on their band here. Um, I actually have a friend that mounted. A, I won't. I won't use your name if you're watching. Mounted a little blade, a little razor blade, on his chest box, and he thought it'd be really convenient to pull it out and and cut it. And it it was, but it also cut him all the time. <laughs> In fact, he had one wrist. He looked like he was having, you know, mental problems, like he was trying to cut himself all the time. Uh, so it really didn't work out. But the final straw for him was he was fighting a fish and he was trying to net a fish and the fish swam between his legs and the leader hit the, uh, hit his little blade there and cut it. He freed himself. <laughs> that was the final straw for that. So I wouldn't recommend anything like that, but nippers work great. And I never buy expensive nippers. I buy the, you know, the $8 ones that, that you buy in a fly shop or gas station fingernail clippers and just buy a bunch of them and switch them out. Don't fight through the season with nippers that aren't any good. Just save yourself the hassle and and, uh, and uh, buy some decent nippers. Uh, Mary says bug luggage is still in business. So, Check that out. Bug luggage is those, those boxes are terrific. I don't know what they're like price wise. Um, I, as I remember, when I had my shop, they were they were slightly expensive. So, but well worth it uh, in my opinion. Now, flies. As I was saying, you want to have something. If you're carrying extra flies, um, make sure that you're not carrying flies in just loose boxes. Now I have them loose in boxes because I have boxes that are 20 years old that I'll probably never replace. Uh, and eventually I will probably drop them in the river at some point. But having something like this, again, one foot, one hand, I can open that up and I've got all my flies right here. So one hand, and that's valuable. If you're holding a rod, got it up underneath your arm, you're holding the leader. I don't want to be fighting trying to use two hands doing everything because that just invites disaster. Uh, there's so many things that we carry with us that you don't want to drop into the river. Um, so set yourself up so everything's convenient and well within, <clears throat> well within reach. Vision. Vision is important. <laughs> Most of us today, uh, need some sort of enhancement for our vision. Uh, if you don't, God bless you. Uh, I remember guiding and I would have, uh, I had some gentlemen one night, we were fishing the sulfurs and it was dark or getting dark. 
and I was changing their patterns. And, and the one guy said to me, how do you see that stuff? And I said, I don't know. I guess I'm just blessed. I had good vision and, and good night vision. And uh, he said, you wait till you're 40. And by God, if it wasn't when I hit 40, first night I was fishing the sulfurs, it was the first evening of that year that we fished. And I couldn't get the tippet through the eye of the hook. I wasn't even close. And uh, it happened when I was 40. So when I really need the most help with my vision is when the light drops. So what I use for that are flip focals. Now, I've tried everything. Now, one thing I will warn you against, and I've talked about this before, these things, when they are tucked up under like this, if the sun hits this just right, they could blind you. I almost wrecked my car one time. I came up over a hill. The sun hit that just perfect, and it went directly into my pupil, and it felt like I got punched in the eye, and I couldn't see for almost two days out of that eye. Um, so be aware of that. What I do is it's worn off of this pair. I have to get a new pair because they won't stay up, but I take duct tape, a real thin piece of duct tape, and just go right around the outside of this and it prevents that from happening. Um, the other thing that you have to be aware of is when you've got that on, you can get a sunspot on your face somewhere when you're standing on the water. But I have found that these things are more convenient than anything else. And it's real nice to just flip it down. I watch guys all the time, bring their rod in, bring their line in, have to hold everything, start fumbling around, looking for their glasses, uh, bring their glasses out, drop them in the water. It, it's a pain in the butt. So you want to have something that's quick and convenient. I do have some that I keep around my neck occasionally. Uh, invariably, they get junk all over them, uh, floating or whatever when I'm trying to pick them up. And it's just a pain. So um, this is the easiest and quickest thing that I've found. You just flip it down, use it for what you need it, put it away. And... Um, just be aware that you've got to you've got to be conscious of where the sun is and, and how that sits on your face. So, you know, don't be afraid to get something that helps your vision. It will really help you. It goes a long way. And you'll find uh, more than likely, even if you have really good vision, if you uh, if you have a pair of these, you'll use them. Believe me, especially when it comes to the really small stuff. Hat is obviously important. Um, one thing that I have done with this is I've put a piece of rubber. I just glued a piece of rubber onto this bill. Now, I've seen Velcro. I've seen all sorts of things, but this is quick. If you take a fly off, you're going to switch a pattern. You want to dry it out before you stick it in your box. You can stick it right in this. It's not going to go anywhere. That's the beauty of rubber. It will hold barbless hooks really well. Velcro won't. Uh, if you stick a, a barbless hook in Velcro, there's a good chance you're going to lose that. So this is just a piece of rubber. Uh, it's very thin, maybe an eighth of an inch. I glued it onto here, and it holds barbless hooks. And I don't have to worry about this thing's been in here since probably, well, it's a blue wing olive, so last fall. Um, <clears throat> so do something where you can put that fly away quickly. I never liked the sheep's wool things on your vest, uh, you lose patterns out of it. And if you had a barb on the hook, you're going to pull half the sheep's wool out. It's they're, they're messy. So do something that's easy. You don't need to keep it, the flies in there for weeks. Uh, you certainly can, but um, you just need a place to stick the fly. Or if you go through your box and you find a pattern that you want to try, pull it out, stick it in your hat, and it's there. But do something like this. Um, to put your hat on. I actually talked to Justin Pittman at Holly Flies about making a visor for me uh, that says Holly Flies on it with uh, with some rubber. So I'm going to show him this and hopefully we can get something like that worked up. Tippet. Um, when you have your tippet, don't be afraid to use a lot of it. Um, guys get chintzy on their on their tip at length pull a bunch out you can always shorten it uh and and in the grand scheme of things it's not that expensive now if you're using fluorocarbon that's a different ball game um you like wasting money anyway so go ahead and waste it <laughs> but um 
use a little extra tippet. Give yourself a little extra room with knots. If you're not really proficient with knots, use longer pieces to tie them with. And you will find that you'll get, you'll get quicker. Um, so don't get chintzy with your tippet. I want to talk a little bit about leaders and knots because I see this a lot where a guy will get caught in a tree or they'll get stuck on the bottom. <clears throat> After you give it a few shots and you can't get rid of it, break it off. Get it over with. Just break it off and start fixing it. Um, it very often takes less time to do that. I have watched clients of mine. Uh, I might be fishing with the other guy, and I'm watching a guy downstream. He got a, a, a knot in his leader while he was casting. And I have sat there and watched them spend 15 minutes trying to get a knot out when they could have cut it and retied it in three minutes. Don't spend your time doing that. It's much easier to cut things and move on. Uh, if you've ever fished with me, I always tell you, I've got a 30 second rule. If I can get the knot out in 30 seconds, I'll, I'll fiddle with it. If I can't, or I've spent 30 seconds on it, the scissors come out and it gets cut and I'll retie everything. That's fine by me. I don't have a problem tying knots, and, and actually, the more you tie, the quicker you'll get, and it's not a big deal. So 30-second rule. Uh, if you can't get something out, break it, retie it. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't spend your time uh, trying, to, trying to pull knots out of leaders. First of all, your leader will never be the same after it's been knotted up like that. <clears throat> Some of your tools. Don't buy cheap tools um, like your nippers and things like that. You know, you don't have to have $30 nippers, but don't buy really cheap ones either. They won't last you. So, you know, buy some decent stuff. Keep it in a secure place uh, and, you know, try not to drop it. I see guys all the time. They have these really nice forceps and they just close them on a shirt tab or something. That doesn't, uh, for me, I guarantee you I would lose those things in a heartbeat. So secure them, secure them to your vest. Um, like I said, this, I like these, these little deals right here. They're solid. I mean, you never have to worry about these things breaking on you. I've never had one break. Uh, I'm sure they do. But I, both of these are from when I had my shop, which was, I sold my shop in 2008. So I still have these things and they, they work great. Um, so secure your, secure the important tools. <clears throat> Couple of little tips, paper towels. You see all kinds of fancy things that you can buy uh, to dry your flies, chamois and things like that. Uh, if you've ever taken a trip with me, Every time I go back to the vehicle, I change out my paper towels. I use paper towels for everything. They, if you uh, have a dry fly, if you fish a lot of CDC flies, just squeeze a CDC fly in uh, some bounty paper towels, and you are golden. You're good to go. So there's little things like that um, that go a long way, and they're inexpensive. You know, I always keep a roll in my vehicle, and. Uh, it goes a long way. And the float, that kind of stuff works much better with a dry fly. So um, don't be afraid to, uh, to carry some towels with you. Another little tip. If you have to fix your leader, if you've got something going on with your leader or you're going to change flies, when you pull everything in and you're standing in the water, Fix the leader first, then dip into your flies. I see lots of guys, they, the first thing they do is, is they, they get the fly that they want to switch to. And then they pull everything in, and invariably they drop that fly or they lose the fly somewhere. So fix everything up with your leader, get everything squared away, then go into your fly arsenal and pick out what you want. Um, that that will save you some time. It will also save you from losing some flies. 
I made that fatal mistake one time. I think I've told this story before. If I have, I'm sorry. But I was guiding a lady, uh, God rest her soul, Ann McIntosh, who was tough. She was a really tough person to guide. Uh, every guide on the East Coast has probably been out with her. Uh, she was a personal friend of mine as well. And uh, I had one pattern that was catching fish that day. And she was fishing horribly. And <laughs> I had one, one of these patterns left. And I pulled it out. I was holding it in my mouth while I was fixing her leader. And, and I dropped the daggone thing. And we watched it float down. And it got about 10 feet away from us. And a huge fish came up and ate the fly. And Ann screamed at me uh, unmercifully. And I told her that was the best drift that those fish saw the entire day. And it was. It was drag free. And, and But the fly got eaten. But I dropped the fly. I should have just hung on to it until I fixed her leader and then pulled the fly out. So little things like that go a long way. Don't walk out of the water to go fix your rig. Uh, you don't want to do that. So anybody has any questions, pass them along. Contact me through the week. Um, another reminder on the lodge, if you're coming to Central PA and you need a place to stay, give me a call. Uh, the lodge sleeps 10 and we have all kinds of uh, water that's very close to it. This thing sits right on the banks of the Little J. So give me a call, 814-505-4568. And once again, the Sulphur School. This is fantastic. If you're into bugs and you're really into tying flies and imitating stages of hatches, um, this school is for you. Baltz and I have a blast doing this because this is one of those things where you can get as technical as you want about this. And quite often the sulfur, that hatch, um, getting technical with it will really help you. Uh, I have always uh, sort of um, promoted the fact that you don't have to be real technical to be a great fly fisherman. But I can tell you that that hatch, that is one where the more knowledge you have about what is occurring during the process, uh, the more success you're going to find. And what's fun about this school is it is uh, we take it to the 10th degree. So you want to know what the migration of the nymphs is like. Um, they hatch differently almost every single day. And we study that. We actually go out, we collect some things, we study the hatch. We have a number of anglers that are fishing, obviously, each evening, and we're gonna talk about it all. The spinners, the hatch, the nymphs, it's terrific. So if you're into that sort of thing, the Sulphur School is a blast. And uh, like I said, it's May 18th through the 20th. We have some slots left. I uh, really haven't promoted it all that much other than sticking it on the website. But uh, I'm gonna talk more about it in the coming weeks. But uh, it is terrific. The other thing is I'm, getting, I'm still getting lots of requests for guiding. Um, if you want to get out and you're a FaceTime member, give me a call and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can't work something up. If you're not a member of FaceTime Fly Fishing, uh, go to www.stroutflyfishing.com. Our last video on there was a woven stone that I absolutely love. And I've gotten tons and tons of comments on that uh over the past couple of days it came out i want to say last sunday maybe i don't remember what day i, I put it out but it's a two-part video so there's part one and part two part one i sort of go through the weave part two is when we actually put some life into it and in the videos you get to see this fly underwater and you'll see why it's so effective it is a terrific terrific pattern and Literally, you can fish it anywhere in the country, uh, any time of year, and do quite well with it. It's a great fly. It takes a little time to tie, but um, so it's, it's a little longer than, than most of my patterns, but it is a great pattern to have in your box, and so I hope you enjoy it. I've gotten tons and tons of feedback on it, and uh, if you're not a member, you can't watch the video, so you got to join. It's 10 bucks a month to become a member of uh, FaceTime Fly Fishing, but money well spent. This week, we've got waiter repair. I'm going to fix a pair of waiters um, in our video. 
and I'm also going to go over rigs. I'm going to tie the knots with the rigs, with the distances, um, and show you some options that you have when you're on the water. And this will be both for dry flies and for uh, nymphs. So I'm going to do some dry dropper rigs and some nymphing rigs. And then I'm also going to, to show you uh, some soft tackle rigs and wet fly rigs that I like. So that's that's going to be our videos for this week. Uh, one of them is about half shot, and uh, hopefully we'll have them out this week. Like I said, I've got the boys this week. It's going to be crazy. So I'm here trying to shoot video all week long. Stay in touch with me. I'm hoping this snow is going to be out of here. Our river was at 1,600 CFS. Uh, before the snow came, and uh, I'm sure it'll pop back up a little bit when this melts, but after this, we should be golden. We should be in great shape, and I cannot wait to get the season going, so stay in touch with me. That's going to wrap us up for this week. Keep us in mind, if you're coming to Central PA and you need a place to stay, call me, 814-505-4568, or send me an email, epstraup at gmail.com. That's going to wrap us up. Get out on the water. Let me know how you're doing out there and always stay in touch with me. Until next week, good fishing.